define for us what yeah. tahrib means in yeah. the Somali context. So tahrib is actually an Arabic word, mm -hmm. um, and in Arabic it's associated with sort of smuggling, yeah. trafficking um, of illegal substances. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But in Somali it has sort of taken a new meaning. Um, a new involving meaning. people. Yeah, involving people. Yeah. So tahrib in Somali means actually illegal migration. And it's not just all sort of forms of migration um, that can be illegal but it's sort of specific to certain type of migration mm. that involves certain demographic um, group within society. Mm. And this is mainly youth immig immigration, so youth migrating out of the Somali regions. Right. And this is usually sort of attract this image. When you, people talk about Taharibi in Somali land, mm. this is where my research has been, is about young people you know, going through Somali, from Somaliland to Ethiopia, mm. you know, through Sudan, crossing the Sahara to Libya. And once they reach Libya, they, tr they cross the Mediterranean um, Sea to reach right. the Italian island. Mm. But there's a lot of dangers that are attached to this and a, a lot of reported fatalities. So Tahrib sort of conjures this image of young people crisscrossing the Saharas and all this sort of dangers that are embedded in this journey. Right. So this is a new form of migration and it's attracting mainly mm. young men and women. The difficulty is in quantifying this. It's right. really it's really difficult because Somaliland acts as you know the origin right. of migra migratory flows. It yeah. acts as a transit country but it also acts as sort of a destination country. So you have this as a magnet that attracts all these uh, immigrants. Absolutely. Right. So you have, for example, Ethiopians mm -hmm. crossing over um, to Somaliland, and mm -hmm. some try to access the port in Bosaso mm -hmm. to cross over the Red Sea into yes. Yemen. But then, you know, they get to Somaliland and they see the economic opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, the construction sector, for example, mm -hmm. there are economic opportunities there, yeah. and then they decide to stay. So right. this has changed from being their transit country, for example, to their um, destination. destination country. Mm. But for Somalilanders specifically, mm -hmm. um, according to anecdotal evidence mm -hmm. in my research, mm -hmm. it shows that they're actually more interested to go outside the region altogether. So they don't really use the you know, ports in Portland, in Portland, the Busasa port or right. the Djibouti port, because mm -hmm. those are predominantly to cross over to the Red Sea. Um, so they, use, they go further afield mm -hmm. and they cross over the Mediterranean because the goal is to get to Europe. And this is really important. So you need to think about it, just Somaliland in sort of a wider perspective and you know, just really think about its recent history. But you've got um, a large number of diaspora that has come, sort of, has came back to Somaliland mm -hmm. and is involved quite heavily and right. extensively in the political arena, for example, but also in the economic arena and also just in the society. But you also have a lot of sort of economic remittance that sustains, you know, livelihood in Somaliland. Um, but what's really important to remember, I think, is there's a lot of exchange, and this is sort of social exchanges that mm. take, takes place between Somaliland diaspora and Somalilanders that are still at home. Mm. And this can be sort of transferred when diaspora come back home. But it can also be transferred, you know, electronically, mm. you know, virtually through social media. But what's really important to remember is, although Somaliland has been stable and there's been sort of social and economic development, but opportunities in Somaliland are quite limited for young people. And then, so if you think about it, diaspora coming back and applying, for example, for jobs, they're much sort of more likely to get those jobs, especially in the international development sector, than... Um, than sort of local local youth because yeah. you know diaspora speak better English mm -hmm. you know they have good education mm -hmm. and this one thing that I think we need to really understand about Somalis it doesn't matter where a Somali lives or how comfortable their life is in the in the host countries home is always really important but being able to come back home is not as easy. You have to make sure you have one, a foreign passport that allows you that flexibility to be able to go back if things don't work out in Somaliland or Somalia, wherever you are. But you also need to come back with the right kind of education, you know, the right kind of resources. Yeah. So the ones coming back actually are quite successful where they, they are coming from in their host country. So coming back is always a narrative within the Somali society. Yeah. But coming back is not easy. You have to be successful in, in the host country to be able to be successful back in Somaliland. And I think this is really important. But we also 
have sort of a cultural constraints that our young people do not want to do these jobs because they might be manual work or they might be jobs that, you know, you don't get a desk and you don't wear a suit and tie. So we also need a socialization of our own people, telling the young people, this is a reality in Somaliland. This you, is don't sound, um, you don't sound very optimistic about uh, this resol the resolution of this problem in the short to medium term. No, I think I'm, I think I'm being realistic. So maybe um, I don't want to be naive in terms of I've lived in Somaliland. I've seen the reality of the Somaliland economy. So I think Somalilanders need to actually be really um, aware of the realities on the ground. And this is young people. I think older people are aware of this. And one of the um, a very prominent elders in, in Hargeisa told me, we don't have a problem with lack of jobs in this country. We have a problem with people not wanting to work. So you have this youth being discouraged that there's nothing in the labor market for them. And for me, this is actually a much bigger problem than youth unemployment. It's youth discouragement. It's young people thinking there's nothing for them, so they will not even bother to go look for them. So this is where the government need to really work hard. And for me, this is what I call sort of um, ways to improve lo job, allo you know, efficiency, sort of job allocation in the economy is to tackle these more problems that I think can make a huge difference about your country and confidence about the future of your country.